Hello, welcome to the second part uh, of the annuity lecture. Uh, today we will address a special case of annuities. We refer to it as deferred annuities. What is the deferred annuity? It is a uniform series of payments uh, that do not begin until some time elapses in the future. You know, with the uh, regular annuity, uh, the annuity would start from year one. However, with respect to the deferred annuity, you will not uh, see that the annuity uh, begins at year one. It may begin at year five and continues uh, to be uh, some uniform series of payments, uh, maybe of uh, four payments or five payments uh, and whatever. Let's see how will it look like on a cash flow diagram. Here you see that this is the present value. Okay. Usually the uh, regular annuity will begin from year one. You will start to see the first payment uh, here and the series of payments will continue. However, the annuity, the deferred annuity is shifted in the future. Shifted by J periods. Okay. So you will see then, then the first uh, payment will take place at J plus one period. Okay, so uh, if this is the first payment, then this is the present value of the annuity. Because, you know, imagine uh, that you uh, took a loan and you're buying a car uh, from the bank. Uh, will you start paying uh, the monthly uh, settlements right away? from time zero no today you took the money of the loan uh, you bought the car you will start pay paying the settlements the next month or the next period so take it as a rule usually uh, any annuity will begin from period one however the deferred annuities you will see that it doesn't begin from period one it is shifted by some period in the future so it's shifted by j period when it's shifted by J periods, then this becomes the zero or the present value of this annuity. And we will treat it as if it is a regular annuity, but it's shifted. Now, how will this affect our calculations? Uh, let's see. Suppose we want to find the present value of this deferred annuity. So we will uh, get the present value using two steps. Now, what's the first step? The first step is treating this annuity as a regular or as an ordinary annuity. Now, if I look at this circle, what do you notice? As if this is uh, time zero, this is the present value, and this is the first period, period one, two, three, and uh, till period n. Okay? Uh, now, uh, what will be the present value of this annuity in the circle? P equals A into p knowing a i n however i don't know what is exactly the value of n here it's in terms of letters but you uh, know that it is from period n till period j okay suppose uh, that uh, you are dealing with an ordinary annuity okay suppose that this is zero and this is one two three and four suppose that we don't have uh, this two uh, say that we have several other uh, uh, um, amounts in between. Suppose that this is 4. What will be the number of periods related to this annuity? So if this is 0, now I have from period 0 till period 4, we have the period of 4 years. So n in this case will be 4. And we usually double check by calculating the number of, uh, 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 the number of arrows. Okay, how many periods, how many payments are there? So you just say one, two, three, four, so n equals to four. So this is what we do when we are treating a normal ordinary annuity. Okay, and this is the first step. Then the next step is to see how do we shift it to our present that we want. Okay, so I will consider that this is an ordinary annuity. What is the present value of this annuity which takes place at period J? So this is my present at J. P equals A into P knowing A, I, uh, I and N minus J period. This is my period. 
if this was 4 and this was 0, then I will say 4 minus 0. But since I don't know what is n and what is j, so I will just have to say n minus j periods. If I adjust for making things uh, written generally in the equation. Now, what about the second part? Now, I got the present value of all the things taking place in this circle, okay? So, what, what did I get? I got the present value at j, okay? So, this is the resultant of everything that took place here. Now, I will say that I have the present, I got the present of this annuity at period j. So, what's left? I only, if I look at the new cash flow diagram, you will see that I will have the p at 0 and the p at period j. Can't I say that with respect to time 0, pj is just a future value, a single payment in the future? Because I already got the resultant of everything happening here. I got the final answer. So can't I put the final answer here and consider that it is a future value far away by j periods and I'm getting its present? So what will be the equation? P0, P at time 0, equals to Pj, which is here the future. You will say that this is F. So as if I'm saying P equals F. So when I open the bracket, it will be P knowing Fi, N. Now what's the period? How far is this present from P0? It's far away by J period. So you'll say it's J. So this is the second step. So if I want to write... Uh, or to get P0 of this deferred annuity right away, what will you say? We will combine the two steps together. This is the first part uh, of getting um, Pj, which was A into P knowing Ai n minus J. The resultant of this was put in this equation. The second part, which is P equals F into P knowing Fij. And what is the value of F? It is the value of Pj that I already have. So if I want to write uh, in details the equation related to P0, you will say that it is A into P knowing Ai n minus J. This part is Pj. Okay. If I want to multiply Pj by P knowing Fij, you put it here, P knowing F, I, J. So as if I combine the two steps. How did I combine them? This is the first part. Okay, after I get the resultant of this part, this is P, J. I just multiply it by P knowing F, I, J. By practicing uh, exercises with the real numbers, you will find uh, uh, the matter more easy. So this is the equation that you will be using. Uh, when you want to get a deferred annuity, the present value of the deferred annuity, uh, this, these uh, are the two steps combined together, so we can use this equation right away. Uh, let's look at an exercise. Suppose that a father, on the day his son is born, wishes to determine what amount would be paid into an account bearing an interest of 10% per year, to provide withdrawals of $2,000 on each of the son's 18th, 19th, 20th, and 21st birthday. So I'm drawing the same amount of money. So this is an annuity of the value of $2,000, and it's taking place at year 18, 19, 20, and 21. But you will notice here that uh, I'm asking about the present value, what's the amount that the father should deposit today so that uh, he would, when he uh, deposit this amount from year 0 till year 17, his son will start making some withdrawals from the bank account of the value $2,000. So you see, the first arrow didn't take place at year 1, it took place at year 18, okay, because I told you that he will withdraw the first amount at year 18. So here you will notice that this is a deferred annuity. This is an ordinary annuity, but it's shifted from the present by a certain number of periods. What's the number of periods? 
Now, uh, the mistake that students would do usually is that they will say that it's shifted by 18 years. Okay, but we agreed that for this ordinary annuity, where is the present value of this annuity? The annuity will take place, okay, at uh, period number one, not at P0. So the present value of this annuity is at period 17. This is my present value of this annuity. So this is PJ, okay? So um, when I get the resultant, the present value of this annuity, I'm standing here. Okay, I got the resultant here. So uh, how far is this period J from P0? It's far away by 17 years. Now, uh, we will uh, proceed with the solution. First of all, we will get the present value at period 17, PJ. Then I will say that the resultant, the final answer, will become a future value at which I'm going to get its present value. So, Applying the equation right away, P0 equals A. What is the annuity? Okay, uh, the annuity is $2,000. Now, uh, what is N minus J? Let's go back to the uh, cash flow diagram. You will see that this is N and this is J. What's the period? What is N minus J? It is 21 minus 17. So, uh, so the period is four years. And to double check, what do we do? How many payments or withdrawals do we have? One, two, three, and four. So N for this annuity equals to four. So please don't do this mistake. This is your N and this is your J. So when I'm getting the present at, period, uh, at this period, the number of years is calculated by saying N minus J. So applying this in the equation, P0 equals A into P knowing A I N minus J, we agreed that N is 21, J is 17, so N minus J is 4, okay? So if I want uh, to do the first step, which is calculating P17, it will be A into P knowing A 12% 4, and A is $2,000, and this is the value of this uh, factor from the table. Now, uh, what will be the second part? P0 will be P17. What is P17? It is this part, okay, multiplied by P knowing F, 12%, 17, because this is J. This is how far is uh, J from the present value. As we agreed, because I'm calculating P, and this P17, as if it's considered as the future, far away from P0 by 17 periods. So when I open the bracket, it's P knowing F, 12%, 17. Or you can uh, write the equation uh, in one step right away. You will say P0 equals A into P knowing A, I, N minus J into P knowing F, I, J. You will get that P0 equals $884.46. With more exercises and practice, you will see uh, that um, it's very easy to calculate the deferred annuity. And we will be solving several exercises uh, in the second sheet. Uh, thank you for listening.